So music copyrights, music copyrights. I've talked about this probably before, clearly before, but I want to reiterate that there's two separate copyrights in a piece of music that you hear. Number one, what you hear, the sound recording, right? That is owned and controlled by a record label who pays royalties to recording artists, okay? Then you have um, the musical work side, which is the composition or lyrics that are recorded in that sound recording, okay? So the composition and lyrics, the musical work, and the sound recording, okay? So for the musical work, um, composers and songwriters and lyricists get paid, okay? And they're, they're represented by publishing companies who also get paid, right? And, and then obviously we have publishing rights organizations like ASCAP, CSAC, and BMI that collect royalties that they give to publishers and publishers dispense those, um, you know, to, to, their, um, to their clients or, or, or to people who own their music. So publishing companies represent um, you know, songwriters. Okay, so those are two discrete um, copyrights in a piece of music that you hear. So every time you want to use sample something, you need to get a master use, okay, sample uh, clearance. So you need to get a record label to to okay it. And also, most recording artists have built into their contracts and have since the late '60s and '70s. Um, what are called remix clauses, which, so while the recording artist, you know, does not own the rights to the music, let's just say um, Taylor Swift does not own the rights to her music, her record label does, right? And her record label is clearly interested in licensing her music. Why? Because it's money. You license, you know, uh, her music for a sample um, that's good for the record label, they get paid. But let's say Taylor Swift doesn't like her music being sampled, right? Well, she doesn't own it. She has a remix clause in her contract where she can say yes or no. And if she says no, they can't, they can't license the sample. Um, so you need to get that. Then you also need to get um, a, a license from the, the publishing side. So all of the songwriters who then get part of your songwriting royalties. So they become authors of your song, and I'll go through some examples of it. Um, these rights, though, can be transferred from uh, company to company, so they can be bought and sold. So when uh, Universal Music Group bought EMI's sound recording catalog, EMI was one of the big four uh, record companies, and now it's big three. Um, you know, all of the master recording rights that EMI had now belong to Universal Music Group. When Sony bought all of EMI's publishing catalog, you know, uh, all of, you know, all of those publishing rights and songs, lyrics and compositions now belong to uh, Sony's publishing arm, okay? Um, but typically sound recordings that you hear are, um, you know, uh, are made for hire, meaning the um, recording artist does not own the master rights. Very few of them do. Um, Stevie Wonder owns his. Some of them buy them back. But um, more newer artists own this um, because they start to own record labels and then through their record labels um, maintain their, their master uh, rights. But most, most recording artists in the typical record label structure don't. Um, the other important thing in the United States, compositionally, uh, you know, um, melody and um, lyrics are protectable. Rhythm is not protectable. Meaning, like, a drum pattern, drum break, like the funky drummer, you could replay that. It's not protectable because rhythm is understood as the building block of all music. So you cannot own um, particular rhythms. Now, if you sample Funky Drummer, you then have to pay songwriting or publishing to James Brown because you actually sampled the song and James Brown is credited as the author. He gets the publishing for that song 
therefore you have to pay him. But if you replay that, you know that that drum pattern, you don't you don't have to you don't have to um, pay. So, um, so in the United States, rhythm is not protectable, and this 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 largely has to get back to the whole concept of where um, American you know music stems from, which is the European classical tradition of Western notation that values melody. Now, and um, you know it, things would maybe different if we were like um, you know Cuba or you know, any African country where their musics are highly rhythmic, you may be able to protect, um, you know, rhythms as, as copyrightable, at least the notation for rhythms as, as copyrightable, but you cannot copyright uh, a drum pattern or a basic rhythm um, in the United States on, on the sound, sound uh, songwriting end.